Take things. off the blazer, loosen up the tie, step inside the booth. Mr. Monday's alive. You're listening to the Urban Business Roundtable. I'm your host, Curtis R. Monday. Call me live in the studio at 312-374-8130. That's 312-374-8130. I see you, Barbara Jean, on my Facebook Live. I know y'all Facebook Live. Y'all asked me about multiple shots. Well, that's why you got to tune into the YouTube station to see the whole, all my beautiful guests. We got some great looking guests in here today. And so go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to the channel. I want to see you today. This show is called the Urban Business Roundtable. It's a show dedicated to the creation, the growth of the entrepreneur, the urban entrepreneur, uh, small business owner. The goal of the show has three primary goals. Number one, we want to redefine the word urban and help the urban community leverage their purchasing power. So often when you hear the word urban right now in society, it gets such a negative connotation, so we're changing that. $1.2 trillion worth of purchasing power exists in the African-American community, and so we want to let our voice be heard. Number two, we want to be a resource for the creation, sustaining, and growth of small businesses and entrepreneurship. Small businesses make the world go round. We ensure most of the labor force right now in the United States of America. And also, number three, to provide small business owners and entrepreneurs access to capital and opportunities to grow their business. We want this to be a platform that the, the people you hear – on this show are able to excel and hopefully we can figure a way to align our synergies together to be able to do some business. You can listen to the Urban Business Roundtable live every Saturday here on the Talk Chicago 1690 AM WVON uh, from uh, every night from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and then also the condensed recap on Wednesdays at 8.30 a.m. and also Thursdays at 6.05 p.m. I got some great guests lined up today. Uh, we have uh, Founder and CEO, and, I, and if, I, if I screw this up with the pronunciation, get me right. Founder and CEO, uh, Teej Hanley. Teej Hanley. Teej Hanley. My man, Kelly Thornton. Good morning, Kelly. How you doing? Good. Thanks for having us, Curtis. Mm-hmm. All right. We got artist, business professor, and community activist, Kareem Wells. Quo. What up, baby? Yeah, we had to practice that one, man. Yeah, so, yeah. my man, I appreciate you. And, man, saving the best for last. Who yeah, don't yeah, know yeah, this yeah, woman, yeah. man? I was like, I would have wore my, my Easter suit. <laughs> If I know she was going to be in the, in, the, <laughs> in the room. Right, right, right. We got the, man, entrepreneur. I mean, she does Truth Italian Restaurant now, but it was, I, I know her bio. I know her, her 401. It was daycares. Like, yes, yeah, they, true, yeah, yeah. True. I feel you, Miss Peyton Wilborn. Good morning, uh, Peyton. How you there. doing? Good morning. Thanks for being my guest today. Absolutely. So keep it locked in the Urban Business Roundtable. But before I get into uh, my great guests, I got to get thanks for things to do. I want to say thank you, God. Thank you for allowing me to do what I do. Again, I try to share these little nuggets that God drops into my spirit each week. And I want to share with you guys to not look at your current conditions. Don't look at your current conditions. One thing about circumstances, they do and they always will change. Mm -hmm. And don't let a limited mind trap you. So I want to encourage you to dare to dream. Sometimes we get caught up in our own mind and we can't see a way to get out this situation to do this thing. But don't. Have a limited mind. Don't let that trap you. Continue to dare to dream because we don't serve a limited God. And so don't let the chatter, don't let gossip, criticism, jealousy, don't none, right. of, none of that bother you. Yeah. Right. Just ignore it. You don't answer to them. You answer to God. So run your race. And I'm pretty sure that every uh, entrepreneur here and every community activist in the room with me today can attest that when you got ready to start your, your, your men's skincare line, your restaurant, or hell, definitely what you do out in the community trying to yeah. uplift oh, yeah. and change this negative stigma with Chirac in our, in our communities yeah. yep. that, you know, people at one point in time probably told you were crazy. And so I, mm-hmm. I, I'm happy for, for all of you. So thank you again. We appreciate you too. All right. Follow yes, me yes. on social media, Facebook, Curtis R. Monday, on Instagram, C. Monday. And also be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We got a lot of great content out there. Drop the new show. In addition to the Urban Business Roundtable, you can catch or go out to the YouTube channel and get uh, my new show, She Flips, He Flips, Real Estate Show with my co-host, EJ Williams. So go out there and listen to it. I got $100 going to my 150 subscribers. People are slick. I said $100 to my 150 subscribers. I've been stuck on 144. And I know what they're doing. They're waiting. They're waiting to see it go 149 and then go ahead and do the chase to mm-hmm. do 150, right? So I'm going <laughs> to, hey. You, I, know, I, you know we got skills. They got skills, baby. <laughs> hey, so I, I, I love the ingenuity. I'm going to switch it up on you. I, I got $100 for whoever. It may be the next one. Maybe the next two. Maybe my 200th one. Mm-hmm. I got a, you never know I'm going to get that, get that money away. Mm-hmm. Y'all are slick. But <laughs> you can learn more about me. Visit my website, chipwithw.curtisrmonday.com. 
Call my office, Curtis R. Monday Insurance Agency, 708-647-1005. That's 708-647-1005. Get your financial house in order today. Invest in yourself and your family's well-being. It's Black Friday coming up pretty soon. We've got these holidays. Stop buying these gifts. They're going to depreciate, break, become outdated. Invest in yourself. Start that business. Invest in some kind of uh, charity. Start your life insurance plan. Invest in retirement. Do what you can. And so I want to uh, encourage you. I want to say good morning to my team, the team that makes up the Curtis R. Money Insurance Agency and also the Urban Business Roundtable, the silent assassin in the corner, never saying anything, always present, big cuz. What's up, man? Troy Howard, TF Studios, the best in the business, videography. I want to say good morning to the uh, man on the ones and twos, our engineer, Mighty Titus, what's going on? And also the producer of the show, Miss Sonia Levine. Good morning, yeah. Sonia. What's happening? What's we happening, y'all? It is a pleasure to see everybody yeah. in the studio. Like you Good said, morning. Curtis, beautiful. it is a beautiful round table in there. Absolutely. <laughs> now, this next topic, I'm pretty sure every entrepreneur in the room can understand. So let me give a, I call it Truth Serum Sun, um, Saturday. Well, I give a little truth, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Talk to him. There are two cancers, as I see it, that can kill a dream, an entrepreneurial dream, a relationship, two cancers. And yeah. I want to point them out. Cancer number one, and they kind of go hand in hand. They're not equal, e- either or. They're, they're both in tandem. One, poor time management and complacency. Mm-hmm. Poor time management and complacency will kill. I don't care if it's reaching out to the community with a project. I don't care if it's starting a business. Hell, I know it'll kill a relationship. If you if you got poor time management, complacency, these two things are a cancer. First of all, people say this all the time, that time is money, right? That's a very limited truth. Mm-hmm. Time is not money. Time is everything. Absolutely. If you're an entrepreneur. It's all about time. Man, it's all about time, Peyton. Mm-hmm. If you're an entrepreneur, you probably taking the L1 or 2. You've lost some money. Heck, yeah. But if you got some hustle about yourself, you got some grit, you can get that money back. Yeah. You can't get time back. No. Nope. You can't get time back. You can't mm-hmm. get time back. Mm-hmm. Time is the most precious commodity, the thing that we have. And as I get older, especially now having my uh, my first child, my son, I'm recognizing how precious time is. And solid entrepreneurs, we protect our time I can't stand nobody to waste my don't damn waste, time. Don't play with me, <laughs> don't. little kid. <laughs> Man, I can't stand nobody to waste my time. Look, let me break it down. It's 24 hours in a day. Let's assume that you get at least eight hours of sleep. And I know that's questionable for entrepreneurs. We, right. we tend to, but let's just say we go on the healthy route and we get our eight hours of sleep. That leaves 16 hours. Mm-hmm. Let's say we give another four just for our wellness, whether that's bathing, eating, Putting our clothes on, and four. So now you're left with 12 hours in a day. Mm-hmm. Let's say you give five, five to relationships, kids, family, loved ones, etc. Right. That leaves a, that leaves you seven hours in a day. And I can argue that those seven hours aren't even all productive. Seven. You probably got really top four productive but, hours. But you're missing something. Go ahead. You forgot about the eight hours a day that you have to put in work. Oh my God! It's well, your job. Oh. So, so start with the twenty-four. Yeah. So twenty-four, you get you got to take away the eight. <laughs> right. Sixteen. Then you got to take away your sleep. Yep. Then you got to take away four hours, like you said, being with the family, or whatever you got to do. And then, and, and, I mean, so you have no time no, to play around. No time. So don't play with me. No time no. to play around. Time is real. Time is real. So when you when you break it down, seven solid hours, right? And so. As an entrepreneur and a business owner, I, look, if we got a meeting at this time, we meet at this time. We were on time, weren't we? we, we. <laughs> it was early. 8.45, right? early. I got here 845. And I'm a night person. I, I, I really got here 8.30, but I couldn't find it in the park. Yeah, I saw you. So I, was, I saw you in the I garage. Up, I said, oh, I can't be late. Lord Jesus, no, 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 no. <laughs> I saw you in the garage. So time is, I mean, time is time is everything. Is everything. everything, everything we're trying to do. You cannot waste time if you got to look. I don't look honestly. If we meet on a certain day, you got to be there at that time. Otherwise, you miss your time. I don't have time. I can't circle back. And as an entrepreneur, it, it, it you, you lose me. Like you lose my commitment when Absolutely. I when I when I sense the level of of respect for my time isn't there. Complacency is another one. Mm-hmm. By definition, complacency a feeling of quiet pleasure. Or security, often while unaware of some potential danger, defect, or the like. Self-satisfaction or smug satisfaction with an existing situation or condition. How in the hell can any entrepreneur be complete? When are we ever safe as entrepreneurs? When, when are you ever safe to say, hey, you know what, my, my, my men's self-care line, health care line is, is, is great. I don't have to, like, strive and Never. work anymore. 
That's the day we die. That's the day mm-hmm. we die. Mm-hmm. Like, like day we what? Die. When can you say, hey, you know, I, I wish and I pray that there's a day when we can say our communities are finally safe from all the violence and, and, and drugs that plague our community. So I'm praying for that. But when do you ever stop? When, when can you ever get, like, in that state of, of it don't exist? It, it, it don't stop. Not at all. It don't stop. Especially for the black Americans. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. cannot get complacent. Can't. At all. Sometimes we get in our own way. Do you agree? I agree 100%. You agree? 100%. I agree 100%. We have to always remain vigilant in our activities. And so it was a story. I, I went to a seminar. I was talking to a Marine, and he was in, he was in Afghanistan, but it was a very, very desolate, dangerous place in Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. It was so dangerous that every time he went to use the bathroom at, at like, their little um, outhouse, for lack of a better term, they had to be in full armor, full helmet. They had to always really? protect themselves. And when they went into another town in Afghanistan, it was a bigger armed base. It was more safe. They had a chow house, as he called it, and they can kind of let their hair down. They had computers and things of that nature. But he said as they approached the um, wall, oh no, after when they would leave, there was this picture on the wall of the base, and it said complacency kills. Right. Mm. Complacency can kill you in business. So what that mean, even walking to where his safety zone is at. Yeah. You cannot get complacent because danger is right there in front of you. Danger is always right there. As my husband says, keep your head on the swivel. Got to keep your head in the swivel. (laughs) (laughs) Got to keep keep your head in the swivel. So, again, I want to encourage you guys not, not to to have poor time management and not to get complacent. Let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to have the patient invest report from Aerial Investments. Great conversation with my guest, Kelly Thornton, Kareem Wells, and also Peyton Wilborn. You listen to Curtis R. Monday here on the Urban Business Roundtable. We're going to go to the patient investment report from Aerial Investments. Good morning, my man, Kwa. What's up, Kwa? What up? Hey, Curtis. So the holidays See, we got are on the corner. And although it's supposed to be a time of peace and joy, for many, it's actually a time of stressful spending. Today, I have tips so you don't rack up debt over the holidays. First, Trim down that gift list. You don't need to buy gifts for every person in your family. Consider giving only to the children. But if you'd still like to do something nice for the adults, consider a gift exchange. This way, you're only purchasing one gift. Frankly, if you're feeling financial pressure, chances are others in your family feel it too. And they might actually be grateful for your suggestion to cut back on gifts. Now another idea is to consider using cash when you shop. When we use our credit cards, it's easy to overspend. However, we're much more careful when we use cash, so this can help us stick to our budgets. And that brings me to the last tip. Take the time to carefully come up with a budget for the holidays and then be fanatical about sticking to it. And if you're not sure how to budget for the holidays, a good place to start is to dig up that credit card bill from last holiday season. How much did you really spend? Did you stick to your budget? Or... Did you have a debt hangover come January and February? The holidays are about quality time with friends and loved ones. And trust me, they don't want you to put yourself into debt. For more tips, visit aerialinvestments.com. And remember, slow and steady wins the race. Thanks, Kwa. We appreciate you. Thanks for that great great information. Let's get right to the proceedings. I want to um, introduce uh, my guest uh, my first guest is an entrepreneur. Uh, he's the founder of Tease Hanley. He's built the men's skin care empire in two short years. He was inspired to create Tease Manly thanks to Hanley thanks to a stressful stroll down the skin care aisle of a department store. He quickly realized that there weren't too many easy and affordable yet effective options for men, and so that needed to be changed. And so he created uh, his brand based on three main tenets. It must be sensible, simple, and affordable, and his goal is to help regular guys look and feel confident by creating a skincare system that is easy to understand and use. I want to say good morning to my first guest, Mr. Kelly Thornton. Good morning, hey, Kelly. Good morning. Thanks for having me, Curtis. All right, all right. I want to welcome my second guest. Uh, he's been involved in a myriad of projects promoting peace and unity, seeking to help kids uh, reject violence throughout Chicago through his fundraising efforts, motivational speaking, as well as through his musical talents as an artist, uh, Quo. Spends his message of hope to middle schoolers in urban neighborhoods that will inspire them to change their lives for the better. Through Quo Theory of Change, the foundation curates resources, teaches life skills, and generates opportunities. I want to say good morning, Mr. Kareem Wells. Good, good morning, morning. Kareem. What up? What up? All good right. Morning. 
I, I third guess um, is you, if you anywhere in Chicago, you, you, this name is just familiar. You just know this name. Truth Italian Restaurant was built on founder Peyton Wilborn's vision, which included a world class kitchen that produced five star Italian cuisine for everyday people. Her vision was also to bring this eg- elegantly designed establishment with great service to the south side of Chicago. She has managed to bring this full vision to fruition with Truth Italian Restaurant located in the heart of Bronzeville, also a second location, and it's O'Hare Midway. O'Hare. And O'Hare. Uh, just been in a grind a long time. <laughs> Love and energy, Miss Peyton Wilburn. Good morning, Peyton. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. All. Hey, you guys, the outtakes of our out conversations off air are often sometimes better than our on air interviews. So we're going to try to like live up to that. Let's start with um, you, Kelly. I'm, I'm I'm always interested and fascinated by by startups and, and things of that nature. We heard a little bit of your bio, but for our listening audience who may not be familiar with you, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Yeah, I grew up in Maryland, um, moved to Connecticut, uh, had a little bit of struggle early on with my parents, separation, uh, went to University of Connecticut and uh, got in the merchandising business, started selling merchandising in New York City, mm. moved to Chicago uh, in um, 1993, so I'm a Chicagoan now for yeah. sure, um, started my first, uh, actually my second business in uh, 2019, I created a global design company. Okay. We were helping big consumer product companies understand how people shop, different shopping channels throughout the world. Um, and in uh, 2014, I started a company called Tej Hanley, which is about helping guys look and feel amazing uh, by understanding skin care and how to take care of their face. Sure. Now, for Tej Hanley, you were literally going shopping at a store and got frustrated with the limited number of options. That's right, mm-hmm. yeah. Now, I got to imagine, we've all at some point have had, like, like seen something and said, hey, this could be a better solution for this. Like, you know, the, the, right. I remember as a, as, as a young adult, I was um, sitting at TGI Friday and was like, man, wouldn't it be great if I had, like, a, a monitor on my screen that I can just push and order my food? They brought it out. And cha-ching, well, I was sleep on the idea because now they got it at Chili's. But it's always yeah, these yeah. ideas, right? That's right. Mm-hmm. You can go a lot of different ways. What made you feel so confident? that men's skin care was the way to go. Yeah. So I, I tell you, you know, um, when I first started uh, Purchase Point, which is a global design business, I sat down with uh, um, a group of um, advi- business advisors, and I explained to them what I wanted to do, and I was super excited. I'm like, this is the best idea ever, just like you described. You know, great idea. you got to light it on fire. Right. And um, at the end of that meeting, they said to me, I said, hey, what do, you, what do you guys think about this? Is this a hot idea? Can, we, can I do it? And they said, you know, honestly, it's not about the idea. It's about the execution. Yeah. So can you execute on it? Yeah. And can you do a great job executing on it? And what makes you think you can do, you can execute on, on your business and your dream and your plans? So I think, you know, having a great idea is definitely one thing. And it just comes back to um, kind of what you were talking about in, in, your, in your segue uh, and your talking points. It's about it's about you know that complacency, that culture sure. that you bring up, and and you have it within you to actually take an idea and execute sure. uh, well on it. So that's what it, that's what it came down to for me. Yeah, and, and you obviously didn't have a limited mind. You know, no. they they actually mm-hmm. could you execute on it, and you, yeah, I could I could do it. You know, you were not limited by the fact you hadn't done this before. You said, but yeah, I, I think I I can do it. Yeah, Kareem, what was the the, the aha moment that made you feel like, hey, you know what, I can get into music. I want to become more active in my community. Um, just just really like from my past, just you know, growing up on the west side of Chicago, um, being in the streets, you know, like a lot of a lot of my peers, a lot of my relatives did. Um, I just always wanted wanted more out of life, sure. you know, from what I was seeing. Sure. So you know, um, my mother was a singer. Sure. You know, oh and, wow, and and you know, my pops never in, really in my life. You know, never was in my life, but you know, I had you know just guys from the street that I looked up to that believed in me. Yeah, you know, they they had a uh, a thing that they saw when they looked at me. You yeah, know, it was like, yo, you got a talent, man. You out here doing this, but you got something. Yeah, and, you know, and I never you knew. You know, years later, I'd become you know what people call you know people call me king of the mitzvahs. Yeah. You know. MC and the DJ and all the top bar mitzvahs <laughs> around the country and out of the country. So yeah. I never thought I'd be in this space. And, you know, I, I feel like, you know, people always say, you know, uh, I just received an award um, a couple of days ago, right, in New, in New York. Yeah. And they they give me an impact award for the work that I'm doing in the community. You know, I'm taking my platform. It was a, it was like a, an event for all DJ companies, party planners, some of the top people in the country, right? 
and getting an impact award for something that I'm supposed to be doing as a black man. Yeah. I'm supposed to be giving back to the community. I'm supposed to do for my people and for, mm-hmm. for the children. They supposed, I'm, this is something I'm supposed to do. You don't have to give me an award yeah. for it. And I, you know, I appreciate the, the, the accolade and the, and, the, and the award, but I know I'm supposed to be doing yeah. this. Yeah, you got, you got rewarded with by doing work that's aligned with your purpose. Yeah. It only takes one person to believe in you and speak life into your situation. That's true. Yeah. Peyton, what was the thing? I mean, you've done it all from, again, I, I was teasing it because I know a background a little bit with the daycare, the hair, day, the and, hair mm-hmm. and now with the restaurant. What was it among the myriad of different entrepreneurial endeavors? What was it with the in you that made you know that, hey, you know what, this is the way I want to go? You know, just like uh, Quo says, you know, I'm from Augill Gardens. Black one, yay, yay. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, we know the struggles. We know what it, what it is to not have. And so when you begin to grow and, you know, see a part of life that you want to, you know, share, and that's what I want to do. I just want to share what, what Peyton is about. Peyton is about making people look beautiful. So I did hair for 37 years. Yeah. Peyton loved kids. Yeah. So I did daycare for 17 years. Yeah. And Peyton loved to eat and, and, and teach people about different foods. You know, we, we as a black American, we, we think all oh, we need to eat or what we used to eat in this soul food. Yeah. There's more food out there. Yeah. Yes, it food. is. Yeah. And you open up a, a five star Italian spot in the and heart. And it was of- not easy. Right, right. Because people, you know, they kind of. Don't you know I'm on the air, man? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> people, you know, they kind of threw rocks at me a little bit. But why, who do you think you are? Why, why do you think Italian? Well, you ate spaghetti, didn't you? Yeah. They say, like, yeah, that's Italian. Yeah. I guess you're right. Yeah, well, what are you talking about? Sit down and eat. Yeah, sit down. And enjoy your food. I love that. Thinking out, outside of the box. Outside. Come on now. Like you said, not being what? Complacent. Not being complacent. Can't be complacent. It's that's funny, right. too, when you have an entrepreneurial desire and a goal to do something, sometimes it's those closest to you that are often the ones who detract you and start. I remember when I, when I, remember when I came home and I told my mom I was going to start my insurance agency. Mm-hmm. God bless her. Um, Celine Monday. Rest in peace. Um, she t- looked at me crazy and said, what? Insurance agency? Like, what? Why you want to do that? You just graduated from college. You got your MBA in finance. And I said, well, I know I can do it. Absolutely. And worst case scenario, if it doesn't work out, I can, you know, do something else. And 20 years later, you know, things have worked out pretty well. But it just goes to show you. And she meant no harm. She was just a mom giving. But just like my mom, they right. don't know. Yeah, they did right. not grow up in that era. They don't know. Right, right. You know? Yeah. But, but here's my thing, and I believe this firmly. If God gives you a vision that that dream or that vision, it is not a prerequisite for someone else to co sign or sign right. on, even understand it for it to come to fruition. Talk to them. You know, you don't you don't need someone to co sign and say, you know, you can I mean it helps when you got encouragement, but it is not a prerequisite for that dream to come to fruition for somebody to understand or agree with your dream. And you don't give up. No. Nah, nah. There's many times I'm like, I just oh, this is so rough. I say, I can't give up. I yeah. cannot give up. That's not an option. Not an option at all. Mm-mm. Kelly, when I read your, your bio, what was interesting, you've seen the value of being able to, to leverage partnerships right. r- really well. Yep. You partner with a college mate, yep. and now you and, um, you and Quo yep. are partnering. That's right. You, you reached out. Time. Yeah. You reached out to um, uh, a YouTube yep. uh, expert about right. men's style care and you partnered. And, and so most entrepreneurs – and I know I struggle with this. We don't play well with others. We we do our thing really well solo. <laughs> it's hard. Like, you know, it's hard. Sure. So partnerships, how, what's been your, your secret sauce for being able to have effective partnerships? Yeah, you know, Curtis, my, my experience has been a little bit different. Okay. You know, my, my experience is that in general, entrepreneurs do want to help out other entrepreneurs. Yeah. Um, but they don't want to waste their time. And I, I think, you know, Peyton was saying this earlier, and I, I agree with her completely. You know, um, but it is about, you know, relationship. Right? It is. And so I, I would put that, you know, God, family, money in that kind of order mm-hmm. for, for me in terms of priorities. And uh, and relationship is, is the key to everything. Yeah. So, um, so you know, and we don't – at Tiege Hanley, we're doing a lot to give back. We're, we're, we're engaged, heavily engaged with Skin Cancer Foundation. We're one of the uh, largest men's skin care brands that are – that are uh, part of Skin Cancer Foundation and Skin Cancer Prevention, mm. Mm. and um, and and we you know and we we don't we don't have that on on our sleeve as a badge of honor. We just believe in it. We mm. think it's important to help guys understand how to take care of their skin and how to prevent skin cancer. Um, and skin cancer became you know for men, um, uh, which is the largest type of cancer, it, it overtook 
um, men uh, getting skin cancer last year overtook women. So there's more men getting really? skin cancer than women. Mm. Yeah. And, and so we started leaning into this. But then what we realized is that we had uh, um, our goals – of, of helping men look and feel amazing because at the end of the day for us it's all about uh, it's all about how guys feel about yeah. themselves and how they feel about themselves translates into you know whether or not they're good friends or good fathers uh, the good the, you know the good uh, at, at their job they feel good about themselves they want they want to get up in the morning mm-hmm. and they want to contribute yeah. they, and, mm-hmm. and they want to they want they want to live their dream. And so that's how Kareen and I got together because yeah. our thoughts about m- helping guys look and feel amazing fit into what Kareem's doing. Anything to add to that, Kareem? Yeah. Um, it's tr- for me, the first thing for me is uh, is I live by five Fs, and that's faith, family, friends, finance, and fun. Yeah. In that order, my good friend Ivan Dupay, 11 Nights Music, has instilled that in me, and I live by it. And, and, and connecting with Kelly and T.J. Hanley, just, I just loved what they stood for as far as wanting to give back, wanting to teach guys how to feel good yeah. on the inside out and the outside in. You know yeah. what I mean? And, yeah. that, and that just fell in line with what I'm doing, building bridges throughout the community, partnering up with different people. I have the spirit of I want to know what's going on in this city. I want to know what's going on with the entrepreneurs. I want to know what's going on with my people. I want to know what's going on with everybody around the city. And I believe in building bridges. One of the things that we do for the bar mitzvah side of things that we do, we um the kids have to do a mitzvah project, right? Where they have to give back a day of service where they have to get back. So I took that and, and dubbed it parties with purpose, right? I'm not just doing these big parties and getting paid all this money. I'm going I'm like, yo, I want to connect kids to our future, which is our mm-hmm. future. I want to connect right. them. Yeah. I want to connect them on both sides to bring these kids together so that we can have a better city. And I want to show them that you can work with, if you don't have a good relationship with someone, how can you really be successful? Sure, sure. You know, at, at, you know Peyton, he, he, uh, he gave, Kelly gave a, 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 a fact that, a stat that men are more, uh, we suffer more from skin cancer than women. I did not know that. I mean, that was shocking at first, but it makes sense because men, we do a lot less with self-care and preventive yeah. things. Like women, oh it, it's inherent, you yeah, know, you know lathering up, lotion right. and doing different things mm-hmm. and, you know, the, like sunscreen when you're going out to the, I'm you like, I'm chocolate, I'm not going to burn. Like, that's, right. I, that's my, my philosophy. Right, and we don't, we don't, right. we don't right. think that. And, we, and, and getting manicures and facials. So that's another thing that I love. We, we sat down and talked. I was like, yo, I get but my see, nails done. But see, I get a facial. I take care of myself. We think, as women, we think you all are soft when you all do that. And Absolutely. It's, it's, we think you all are soft, not. but it's important for you all to do right. that. Man. It's about caring for Look. yourself like we do. And, 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 mo- and most women, they want they want men to smell good. Listen, and look good. We do. I don't care what you. I don't. I don't <laughs> care. To be nice. Listen, I don't care if you call it what metrosexual, whatever you call it. Look, I'm going to get a manicure. Talk to him. I'm gonna get a. Pa- mm-hmm. I want somebody to rub on me with a massage all day. Rub his little bald head of my, my <laughs> man. You get a tip. Like you, you get. You I'm tipping ni- you. You have nice skin. Thank, oh, thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you. Thank mm-hmm. you. But I'm. I'm with. But you're right that like it's not. It wasn't considered very manly for a, a man to nah. really embrace. Right. Self care and, right. and and pampering and and doing and things to re, to rejuvenate ourselves. I, I learned it from a woman. Yeah, there's, I learned. You know, go get your nails done. Yeah, get there's, your toes done. There's no done. context yeah. for this. For there's no context for this for guys. Yeah. You know, we don't grow up saying, you know, your father didn't say to you, you know, hey, Curtis, wash your face, man. No. Put some put some, some lotion on it. Yeah. Like, right. You know, use an exfoliator on your skin. You got to look good, man. You can't go out of the house looking like that. Yeah. There's no context. Me and Quo don't sit around, well, like, you know, talking about his bar mitzvahs and, and, and say, by the way, Quo, you know. Your skin looks phenomenal today. Let's go down to Nordstrom's and, and see what's new down no, there. No, we don't do that. We'll we, don't, we don't have that conversation. No, we don't do that. <laughs> so it is, it's just important for guys to know they need to take care of themselves. And that's that's how we connect it because Quo's engaged with iGrow Chicago and a lot of organizations and us uh, at Tee Hanley. And by the way, it's really important to know. This wasn't something that we, we were trying to do because we wanted to, you know, generate more PR or anything of that nature. Yeah. We just – we literally wanted to get out there and, and, and try to serve some, some, some people that wouldn't normally have access to our products. Sure. And that, that's, where, that's where it came in. And what I found out, Curtis, is when we took our team out of our office and yeah. when, when Quo brought his team, he brought his team of 30 people over to our office – uh, into, into our warehouse and our distribution center to help us prepare for some events. 
when he brought his team in, we brought our team teams in from both our warehouse, our marketing, our operations, finance, yeah. brought it all in, brought it together. We spent hours together preparing. And then when we actually went out in the community and, and had a chance to talk to people and talk to guys in the community about what it means to take care of yourself and feel good about yourself, man, it was just amazing. It sure. was so uplifting. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't about, you know, when, when, at the end of the day for us, it was like, our guys, our our people, our women and ladies at the company were like, "That's amazing. We Absolutely. need we need to be doing more of this." So again, yes, Kelly and and Quo, great examples of a partnership in in the works and how successful and it can be. And they work well together. Absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, it, one it, of the I'm sorry, one of the other things that's that's challenging with small businesses is is gaining scale in your operations and expanding. Peyton, you were able to deny the odds and start your five-star Italian restaurant in the heart of Bronzeville, mm-hmm. and now you've expanded to yeah. another, a second location yes. at O'Hare. Uh, Talk to us about that journey and how you were able to do that. You know, I was asked, you know, when they interview you for, for the airport, they yeah. interview you, and they asked me, why do I want to go into the uh, O'Hare airport? Airport, yeah. I want everyone to taste my food. Mm. I don't want to <laughs> tell them. I don't want to just be local. Yeah, I yeah. want everyone to taste my chicken spicy Alfredo. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Let's, yes, I do. My, my crab cakes, my my lasagna. I want everyone to taste this good food. This you is why. Share it to the world. Yeah, I want to share it to the world. Yeah, absolutely. What was the biggest challenge with getting a second location? <sighs> Let me see. The biggest challenge was credit. Yeah, you have to have good credit. Can't do anything without in business without credit. You, you right. have no credit. They, they want to know relationship. They want to know who you who, who you do business with. Right. What's your credit with them? What's your credibility? Will they speak on your behalf? So I had to I had to gather all this information, uh, uh, reach back to people I don't use anymore, and ask you know ask the people to vouch for you. Right. That's that's that that was the toughest part because right. people like you said time is everything. They don't have time to. Call and speak for Peyton Wilborn. I always wondered about restaurants with this, Peyton. So let's imagine you're cooking for yourself, and you're cooking for yourself, and it's a great outcome. When you start to expand the number of people you're cooking for, how do you maintain the integrity of the recipe and the quality of the it's, food? Food is subjective. Okay. I could tell you, man, I want you to what, – what, what, Peyton, what's good on the menu? We, everyone love our spicy chicken alfredo. It's the bomb. Right. Dot com. Right. You get it, and you be like, I don't really like that. Okay. That is crushing. Okay. Because we put our all our love into what we're serving, and we want everyone to love it. Right. And when they don't love it, that affects us. So say, let me say it this way. So you got the first, you got the one restaurant, the, the first restaurant in Bronzeville. It's doing great. Well, when you get one restaurant the second restaurant, you can't be at two places at one time. Right now in, in Great management. You, okay. Great relationship. Yeah. It's like we're talking about. Great management. So you got systems in place. They do, hey, you make the spicy chicken Alfredo or Parmesan the same way each and every single time. Right, right. Gotcha. I, and, if, and if I get some complaints, they, get, they don't want to deal with me. They don't want no problems. <laughs> you, 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 you was there last week. It was juking. Do I work hard? You, hey, the power, we party so hard, the power went out. And Peyton got from behind the bar. <laughs> Um, mixing drinks to figure out what's going to power. Then we got the power on, and she passed out. And how long did it take? Just like, like that, that. Like, yeah, that's yeah. called taking ownership. Yeah, I, and I that's that's something we got to do. This is how be. I eat. Yeah. So I don't play. I don't allow anyone to affect my lifestyle. Yeah. Or to affect my brand. Yeah. That's right. Talk yeah. to them. You yeah. understand what I'm yes. saying? Because people don't have the same love that you have when it comes to your brand. So you have to make them respect that. Yeah. So when the lights went out and they ran in there, I was Johnny on the spot. Yeah. Because you want to have a good time. Let's go. You don't want to end the party. We got Geraldine Denson. She says, airport real estate is prime. They gave Harry Carey Steakhouse a hard time. Yeah, well, Harry Carey, not Peyton. Yeah. So (laughs) I'm glad that Peyton was able to do it. It's it's very difficult. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I love I love how you just step out of the box on your stuff. You like I'm doing Italian food, and that's that. Y'all gonna come get the Period. best Alfredo. If you don't eat it, then I eat it. What? Come on, <laughs> <laughs> well, come on now. I, I mean, some of the best, some of the most successful businesses are created from just thinking outside of the outside of the box. You know, having an Italian restaurant is not a new thing. 
have an Italian restaurant in the heart of the south side of Chicago in the African American community definitely is. I mean, it's it, we got enough bar bars and steak sandwiches. Absolutely, we got, <laughs> we got enough ch- um, chicken gyro places. I mean, yeah. we got enough and of those. And nothing knocking in those places. I'm, you know, it's right. just expand your territory. Expand one, your territory. one of my things I want to see a sushi restaurant on the west side. Now I tell people this okay. all the time. I really do. Okay. Now we can do everything Pulaski we want to Madison. do, but we got to stay away from that culture. <laughs> sushi. We, 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 we can do everything. I don't. With, I don't eat fish. I just want to see it. Chinese law, that's not our. But no, nah, it's a ton no, of sushi, Chinese though. restaurants in, 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 in our communities, and they even fried chicken too. Like, but I'm you talking go, about, you can go get some they chicken. They can do wings. every. Let me tell you something. They can do everything we do, but we can't do what they do. Okay. okay. No, but no, but I, I I would love to see that type of restaurant. You know, in in in, in well, that area, collaborate. but just different. You know, just you know being right. just, just it's different. I, that's disruptive. I got this philosophy. I'm born and raised in Southside Chicago, and I always say this: If you picked up my property, which happens to be in Bronzeville, put that same property and put it up north in Lincoln mm-hmm. Park, my property value would be four times the amount it? that what it is yes, right it now. Would. Mm-hmm. And when I walk in my neighborhood, walking in my neighborhood in, in Bronzeville, it's not like walking in the neighborhood up north. It's got they got businesses. It's a lot of different commerce. It's yeah. banking. A lot of it's a whole plethora of different things up there. So they I have, encourage. They have yeah, more walking traffic than we do. Yeah. If we could get a little bit more walking traffic in our neighborhood, we we do well. So That's we're getting great. ready to wrap up in, in the last ten minutes or so. But I want to get you you guys' perspective on this. And let's start with you, Kelly. Sure. If twenty twenty is coming up, what's the goal for the business in twenty twenty? Triple digit growth. Okay. You know, we 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 have uh, we have goals in terms of you know what we want to accomplish for uh, you know sales goals and and bringing in new customers to our business, expanding our product lines, um, you know, and actually we we want to engage more with our customers. So sure. we're, we're direct to consumer business. We only sell at teach dot com, and um, and for us, you know, how how does a small bis- business differentiate itself? And it's the same thing as Peyton's talking about. Mm-hmm. For us, it's just about. You know, how, how do we differentiate ourselves? And, and it's primarily around a community and guys wanting to be part of Tiege Hanley and, and, and being part of what the brand represents, you know, helping guys look and feel good about themselves. So that's – for us, it's about bringing more guys into our brand and wanting to be part of what we're trying to do to help guys and, um, and, and you know, and to continue growthing, uh, growth and success of the business. You know, um, we want to give back more in 2020. We want, to, we want to team up more with the community because we see so much value in that, not externally but internally for what it does for the company. So um, those are part of some of the things we're trying to accomplish next year. And for our listeners who want to learn more about your products or buy your products, where can they find? Um, Tiege.com, T-I-E-G-E.com. And um, we'd, we'd love to have you. Come over. you got any questions, comments, we'd love to. Uh, we make simplified skin care systems for guys. We uh, tell you exactly how to use them in each box that we ship out, and uh, we make it simple. All very, right. very easy to get in, very uncomplicated. Stick with us. All right. Kareem, Kareem Wells, also known as Qua, tell us a little bit, Qua, I'm sorry. Tell us uh, about your goal for 2020. Uh, my goal for 2020 is to just uh, expand the company, sure. to scale the company even more, doing more bar mitzvahs and more mitzvah projects throughout the country, just do, just getting more MCs, more dances, building the company. Uh, most importantly, uh, giving back. Just want to bring resources to the different organizations like Rage on the South Side, uh, Kids Express on the West Side, you know what I mean? My foundation, the Quote Foundation. Uh, just give back more. I, 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 got, I got a lot of work to do, and I'm looking forward to 2020, to be honest. Sure. And if individuals want to support the foundation, uh, hire you for your services, or just learn more about you in general, where can they find you? Log on to KWOE Group. Dot com. So quotegroup.com. You gotcha. can get all the information on me. All right. All right. Uh, Miss Peyton Wilburn, 2020. Same here. Expansion. You know, I want people to uh, appreciate what, I want, what I'm trying to uh, give them, you know, offer them. And, um, you know, growth. And, I, you know, I like to speak to some of the young uh, black girls that's growing up. Mm-hmm. Let them know that uh, you could be a woman in leadership, you know, and um uh, just want people to, you know, to to love what I'm offering. Right. New restaurant is it open yet? No. Uh, you know they still been uh, building on that on that wing of uh, O'Hare. So as soon as they get done, you know, I'm gonna build out. I'm gonna have a. You Man, know, I did I'm, not have a grand opening for Truth. Okay. A ribbon cutting. No. What? Okay. Because 
I mean, I just jump right in and, and open the working. doors. Yeah, get to work. But I am going to do something like that for O'Hare. So I want to invite. Yeah. Absolutely. M- all of us. More spikes for chicken. Indiv- for Free food for everyone. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm in the airport a lot, so I, I'm, I'm going okay. to okay. support it. Yeah. I promise. Yeah. For individuals, um, Peyton, who want to learn more about you to come out the truth, give us your information. Uh, truth Italian, www.truthitalian.com, uh, 312-715-8796. All right. Now, I want to thank all of you for being my guests today. And I, and I say this to every single guest. I mean, we're really intentional about the Urban Business Roundtable. We want, I think, that faith comes by hearing. And people need to hear these stories, remarkable stories about what people are doing so they can be encouraged. Someone is sitting at home right now with an idea, with a burning in, in their spirit to do something. And your message today probably could have been that thing to push them together. The second thing is I'm very practical. I'm a very pragmatic guy. And so I'll, I'll look to try to see where we can align ourselves and find synergies on things that we can partner on and things of that nature. So when you out there, I make sure I give you my cell phone number. Mm-hmm. Yes. Reach out to me, text me. I'm a serial text messenger. So if you, now if you call me and you don't like like text Can't me and you. say, hey, I ain't going to answer. But if you text me on the store, you ain't get you locked in. But I really, really want to make sure that we're able to connect and do different things to support your business. Consider yourself welcome to come back here. Oh, thank you. Thank Not you a one much. and done thing. You know, mi casa, su casa. When I get to the next stage, I'll come back. And absolutely, absolutely, yeah. absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so I want to thank all my uh, social media followers, Cynthia Bowman, we appreciate you, Jeff uh, Buford, good morning, Tommy Williams, Noah Cannon, what's up, baby, I appreciate you, and so again, uh, for everyone that uh, tunes in to the Urban Business Roundtable, we appreciate you, my day doesn't stop, I got a quick break, and then I come back at 11 a.m. to do uh, She Flips, He Flips with E.J. Williams to talk about real estate, trying to flip the financial landscapes in our communities, trying to change or flip financial poverty in our households, and the way we do it is via real estate. Um, I don't do this for uh, my first name, which is Curtis. I do this for my last name, which is Monday. So Chance Jordan Monday, Daddy loves you. God bless you. I'll see you soon. Say what you want to about me, but I always know I did it my way. God bless. Bye-bye.